Hey, it's Captain Matt, Boater Secret Weapon. Today we're talking about boat buying mistakes, mistakes that are, are all too common buying new or used boats. Let's jump right in. The first one, I think this is probably the most common mistake on new and used, is buying a boat with too small of a motor, whether it's, uh, you know, you're putting a 50 on a pontoon, but you want to do some water sports and you're going to put eight people on it. Whether you go with the 3.0 liter or the 4.3 liter and you get the smallest engine available to save some money. Remember, when you're looking at horsepower, you want to make sure the boat's going to be able to perform, to do the things you want to do with the type of weight that you're going to put on a boat. The, the more weight you put on the boat, the slower that boat's going to go and the, the slower it is to accelerate. So in your test drive, which is you and a salesperson, the boat may do, you may say, yeah, that'll work. I think that's going to be great. But when you add all your gear, you add a cooler, you add six more people, uh, you add a full tank of fuel instead of just a few gallons, it can make a big, big difference in your performance. And you can go from, yes, I think that will work to very, very disappointed. So keep in mind the horsepower. That's why we'll talk about another mistake that can help you avoid this one completely. The next is there are so many different styles of boats out there. Um, it's just flat out choosing the wrong style for what you want to do with the boat. If you want to uh, do a bunch of water sports and you don't have the right horsepower or you have a, you get a cruiser um, or you want to go fast and you, you get something that is not designed to go fast, you want to go to the sandbar, but it's got the fishing layout. The layout and the style of the boat can have a dramatic impact on how much you enjoy it. So I really tell you to ask the question, what's 80% of what we're going to do and then let's make sure we get the boat that's going to do that 80% really, really, really well. And then maybe we can do the other 20% of things that we want to do. Um, that's going to lead you in the right direction of the style. Go to the, the First Time Boat Buyer Academy, some of our other videos that talk about boat styles. And it'll help you zero in on the right style um, on the channel. The next is getting a boat that's either too small or too big because you can go both directions. Too small is you've got a family of six and you get a boat that's got a capacity of eight. You think, oh, we're fine. Well, remember that that capacity plate, not only is it whichever comes first, the weight or the number of people, usually you hit the weight first if you have adults because the, the average weight they're using these days can be as low as like 140 pounds. Um, and, uh, that, that can really skew the number of people you can put on the boat. Um, and even if you have six and the boat doesn't have real comfortable seating for six, um, you know, you want to make sure that you figure out, all right, where are people going to sit? Um, where are we going to put actual butts? Um, and then do we have, is the weight going to work as well? And then we talked about the performance of the horsepower with that weight. Will we get the performance that we need? But you can also go on the other side. You can go too big and you can be, a, this is more specific for first time boat buyers. Um, you can get a boat that's too big for the body of water you're on. You can get a boat that's too big for the situation in which you're going to be handling it. If you're the only one that's going to be driving, trailering, docking, tying up and maneuvering the boat. Well, if you've got a 40 footer, that may be too much for you, or even a 30 footer, depending on uh, how mobile you are and, and uh, your, your skill level and your confidence level. Those types of things do matter. Another thing that people don't really consider when it's looking at size is sometimes it can be difficult to get a boat loan or boat insurance if you don't have any experience as a boat owner and you want to jump right into a 40 footer or above. Um, they may say, you know what, we aren't going to insure this and you may have a difficult time. You may have a lender that says, you know what, we're not going to loan on this because you never even owned a boat before and you're jumping into something too big and, and they, they see defaults on that type of stuff. So the, the too big can be a number of different things. The too small is more where is everybody going to sit? Is it going to handle the type of water that you're going to be on? And with the weight that you're going to put on it, is it going to perform the way you want it to perform? The next is not truly understanding the true cost of ownership. That's why I created this video. Um, how much does owning a boat truly cost? The unbiased truth is because so many people in the industry will talk about how inexpensive boating is, and it can be 100% accurate, but... You need to understand that there's more than just the cost of the boat and the down payment. You have gear, 
you have storage, you have uh, maintenance, you have fuel, you have the cost of winter storage, depending on if you're if you can leave the boat in the storage place that you choose year round. And it may depend. Um, and the repairs at some point, something will break on your boat. I promise you it will, whether you dig it, whether it's a mistake you make, whether the boats just needs to, you know, something bad happened, um, you know, whether it just wears out at some point, something on your boat will break. And, um, you need to be able to figure that into your overall budget for your boating fun. And uh, that's why I created this video. It's a great one to watch if you um, are boating on a budget, which 90% of the people are. They don't have unlimited funds. So that's a great one to check out uh, and, and to avoid that mistake. The next, we talked about it in the terms of cost, but it's also where will the boat be stored? Where will you store it during the season? There is a limited amount of storage space available for boats in most parts of the country. If you can't park it in your driveway because you're HOA, if you don't have a storage lot near you, um, are you going to keep it at a marina in the water? Those are crazy limited in a lot of areas, and they can be very expensive at times. Are you going to store it in a dry stack marina, which is super convenient, keeps the boat nice out of the water, um, but again, very, very limited and only available on certain bodies of water? Are you going to keep it in an outdoor storage, maybe covered, maybe not? Maybe it's a gravel lot. Can you get a space when you want it? Maybe you want it indoor. Figure this out before you buy the boat, because if you don't start looking at storage until after you buy the boat, you very, very well could be in a situation. Don't be shocked if you get in the situation where there's no storage available. So now you have the boat and now you don't have anything to do with it. You don't have anywhere to put it um, to use it for the season. It's a very, very common thing to happen. And put that searching for storage before you put the writing for the check and taking delivery of your boat. Another mistake that can be made is what are you going to do with it in the winter time? If you can't leave the boat in your normal storage spot for the season over the winter, well, what are you going to do with it? Do you have to get it shrink wrapped? Do you have to get it blocked up and put on the hard? Um, do you want to store it indoors? What's the right situation for you? And is there availability? It's limited. The boating world, the capacity to deliver the services in boating is oftentimes less than the need of the consumer. So not enough storage for dry storage and uh, during the season, not enough winter storage um, in the you know, outside or inside in certain situations, not enough technicians to do the works on the boat. There's a lot of those issues going on. So you want to think about that before you buy your boat and address them. The next is just not inspecting your used boat well enough. Thinking it's like a car where I'll do a quick little test drive. If everything's good, we're good to go. Well, the reality is my channel really started around this is, is trying to educate people on how to avoid these mistakes. And that's what most of the education is on. And I realized I, I never made the, what are those mistakes specifically in a single video, but you can go through the channel and you can figure out how to inspect it. But there are so many things that can be a problem when you buy a used boat, even a new boat, you want to inspect that. We talk about that. The Boat Buyer's Toolkit's totally free and something that you can get to help you along. And like I said, there's a bunch of videos as well. But that can be a very big mistake, is not thoroughly inspecting the hull, the components of the boat, the motor, the drive, the lower unit, the trailer, all of those things make a difference, okay? Next, we have not doing a sea trial or a demo or an, a test drive, whatever you wanna call it. Um, this is for new and used boats, not going through the process of actually putting that boat in the water and running it for a good 20 minutes, going through the demo checklist that's in that free toolkit. I've got a video on this. We talk about it in the First Time Boat Buyers Academy, making sure that you find all the issues that may come with that boat by putting it in the water, because you will find things that you can never ever find unless it's floating in the water and being run under a load, um, which means actually pushing that boat through the water, hitting rough chop, making turns, accelerating, you can find out, do you have enough horsepower? Put the right amount of weight on the boat. What's it going to go? Put the number of people on. It feels different in the water than it does when you're sitting in the driveway or in a showroom floor or in the dealership or at the boat show. It feels different in the water. And it, a boat that seems, this is plenty big, can get really small when you're in the water. You can also hear mechanical issues, leaks. 
you can find system issues where you can't run the live well or the fresh water pump or the ballast tanks or some of those things that you just have to be in the water to run to see if they're working. And that's why it's really, really important to put that boat through its paces on the water. The next is a regret buying from the wrong dealer. I, I did a whole video on regrets, and this is one that's that I put in there because buying from the wrong dealer can be a major mistake that people make because, it again, it's not like a car where it's very robotically built and they can churn out hundreds of thousands of cars a month um, with minimal defects. In the boating world, the boats are very much handmade, which means that there are mistakes made, that there are little things that need to be corrected after the boat's completed and delivered, and maybe even after you run it for a, a couple of months or six months or a year. And having a dealer that's local, that you can easily get to, probably need to bring the boat to them, that has good service after the sale, that's going to take care of you, that's going to be responsive, that's going to be um, a, a wanting to give you the best ownership experience, not just to sell you the boat, but to actually give you a great ownership experience, that dealer is critical. And it's one of the biggest regrets that people have is that after they buy the boat, they they have problems with the dealer, problems that probably could have easily been figured out before they bought the boat. So the next, and this is specifically for pontoon buyers, but you buy a pontoon and the pontoons are too small. What happens is I do a whole video on this in my, my pontoon versus tritune video and the problems with pont or with tritunes. We talk about the size of the tubes themselves. These are 23 inch pontoons. When you put any weight on them, if you see how far they sink down in the water, they don't have the same level of buoyancy as if that was a 25 inch tube and they're now do 27 and even 29 inch tubes. For me, the 25 inch tube is pretty good for most applications. Some applications, the 27 is right. But think about how much weight you're going to be putting on the boat, how much weight you're going to have in the boat with gear and the motor and fuel uh, and batteries and all of that stuff. And be aware that if you go with too small of tubes, you reduce your buoyancy, which is going to reduce your performance. And at a certain point, it's going to become difficult to run and chop your water. So that size of the tube is a big mistake that people make that they don't realize that, oh, this tube is smaller than other tubes that I can get. Typically on a little bit older pontoons and cheaper pontoons that you'll find that. Now, this is a surprise for some people, and it is the trailer. When you buy a boat, you're so focused on the boat itself. You're focused on the motor. And the trailer can sometimes be an afterthought. And a lot of people will say, I'm going to save some money on the trailer. I'm going to save money on the trailer and I'm going to get, it's right on the cusp. Should I go with the next size up? Well, that's an extra $1,500. So I'm going to go on the cheap end of the trailer and save some money there. I encourage you not to do that if you're going to trailer your boat for any distance and any amount of time. It can make it very unsafe. And if you have a trailer issue, a boat, that's broken down on the trailer is something that's very, very difficult to deal with. I've got two videos on V-Haul fiberglass boat trailers and pontoon trailers. I encourage you to check those out, how to inspect it, how to make sure it's the right size. There's some, some telltales, there's some tagging, some, some way they label trailers. And also you can just see by this one that where these bunks end and where the transom of the boat is, tells me that this trailer is way too small and it could potentially cause issues with the transom on the boat, the back end of this boat. Triple axle, double axle, single axle. I encourage you, if you're on the cusp, go to the next size bigger. You're going to be safer. You're going to be happier over the long haul. And that, um, that extra money is money well spent on the trailer. So don't forget about the trailer. Also, don't forget about the trailer if you're buying a used boat. Again, you get so focused on the boat itself and the motor and the trailer is just an afterthought. Yes, it has a trailer. Good. Well, yes, it has a trailer, but make sure that trailer is not going to break down on you when you're towing that boat to your favorite boat launch. You've got to check, is there rust? Is there corrosion, especially on your leaf springs? Um, you know, do the lights work? Is there, you know, there's been corrosion and rust that will snap a tongue, snap an axle. All of those things can and do happen. And you want to make sure that you don't just say, yes, we have a trailer and leave it at that. You want to make sure you inspect that trailer, preferably 
while you're doing your on-water demo, your sea trial, when that boat is off the trailer. You can get to see everything a little bit better. You can see that axle. Um, you can climb around. You can get to spaces that it's more difficult when the boat's sitting on. And again, watch those trailer videos. They're really, really good. The next mistake is coming to financing. If you're going to finance your boat, getting the right financing can be the difference between spending more money on the exact same boat, everything versus saving some money or saving some cash flow, whatever's most important to you. So watch this, how to find the best boat loan, because it varies for everybody, but it can be a major mistake that people make. They choose the wrong financing source, and then they end up paying more for the boat that they negotiated down and got the lowest price on, but because they didn't get the best financing, because they didn't know what to look for, they overpaid there. Same thing with insurance. This is more about your actual protection, buying the boat, and then just putting it on your homeowner's policy. Oh, we've got Allstate, we've got State Farm. That I've got my homeowners is with State Farm, but not the boat. The boat needs to go, in my opinion, to a marine insurance specialist, somebody that just does marine insurance and preferably the type of boat that you're buying. I've had story after story, even people that I know that have had issues with their boat insurance because they did it through their homeowners because it was just easier. It's only one check. And next thing you know, they have a claim and they're wishing they would have taken my advice and gone with the marine insurance provider for a number of reasons. Watch that video. It's really good. And uh, you'll definitely learn something and you'll definitely probably save money on your insurance and get better coverage if you go with the uh, advice that we give there. The next mistake is people just flat out overpay for their boats. They pay too much. We're coming out of the pandemic and we'll see where prices go. But even in the heart of the pandemic, when boats were going for, you know, multiple offers and, and people were outbidding people that are already scheduled to take delivery of the boat and dealers were jacking up prices, even over MSRP in some situations. And yet there were still people that were able to negotiate a better deal than what they initially thought they could get uh, with this magic money-saving method. You can learn more about that at BoaterSecretWeapon.com slash save. It's a negotiation technique that works with dealers and private sellers. There's also six additional negotiation techniques to use with dealers specifically. Use that to your advantage and don't overpay. It's a major mistake that most people make. Most people pay too much for their boat. And with this information, you can actually save some money and ensure you get a good dealer. So if you enjoyed that video, give it a thumbs up, give it a like, give it a comment. If you're searching for a boat, you're shopping for a boat, grab that free Boat Buyers Toolkit. If you're already a boater, grab that free Boater Boot Camp. It's a three-part video series, totally free. You're going to love it. And remember, life truly is better on a boat.